Alisa, welcome to the podcast. I'm Thank just you. so thrilled to have you here. <laughs> I'm just so excited, so excited. People are like, what's what's happening? <laughs> what is- I'm excited to be here too. I've never <laughs> been on an art podcast. I know. I'm so glad. But we're going to talk a little bit about this later, but just to introduce, I already introduced you, but you, you are also a Pinterest marketer, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's how I met you through the internet because the internet is fabulous like this. I don't like <laughs> to be it? just negative. <laughs> we just find awesome people and awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm meeting a celebrity. I'm like, oh my Aah. goodness. No, <laughs> we're just old friends. <laughs> oh, no, but you always so personal the way you explained everything. We're going to talk about more Pinterest later for artists, but I'm just super excited that you were here and mm-hmm. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure. So it was really interesting when I, you know, I follow you, as I said, for so long. And then suddenly I start to hear you saying, I'm playing with art. And I went to your Pinterest and I saw all these videos of your idea pins. And tell people what kind of art you like to do, because I know what it is, but just tell people. It's basically fluid art. So acrylic paints mixed with mediums and water Mm -hmm. that you then abstract right abstract very abstract Abstract, yes Mm -hmm. absolutely and there are lots of different methods of it Mm -hmm. um uh but i i particularly like the dutch pour which is like an air swipe and then the swipe itself which you do i'm not very familiar what's the difference oh um so with a dutch pour you you put down a very liquid base it's almost Mm -hmm. like like heavy cream Mm -hmm. text uh, kind of consistency and then you put your colors down and then you pour a puddle like around your colors and you blow it over and when you blow it over it mixes together and creates these beautiful cells and your base is white or it can be whatever color Um, you can do whatever you want black makes some really dramatic and beautiful contrast especially with the metallic so those i always seem to love those the most but um absolutely you can do white um yeah, it's it's a technique. Rinska Dalma, um, she kind of coined that phrase Dutch pour. Mm-hmm. And I just found out why it's called a Dutch pour. She said it's because the Dutch, she is Dutch, are cheap. And, it's, <laughs> and I thought, wow, I guess you can say that, but uh, like I can't. Um, and I'd never heard that before. Uh, but it's just using paint, acrylic paint and water. And she uses really nice paints like the Amsterdam acrylics. Uh, I tend to use some flow trial as a medium instead, mm-hmm. but it's, it can create as vivid or as soft, uh, yes. an idea as you want. And depending on how you blow it out and it, it's funny, you could do the same colors in the same order in the same way. And it's never going to look exactly the same. There's always so much variability. So where are you speaking from? I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina. So is the weather the influence? Like, is it too hot for the paint? Or <laughs> funny you should say that. Yes, the last two weeks have been a complete bust as far as painting goes. And you know, my home is air conditioned, but my studio is in the attic, which is yeah, gets so hot. It's very hot. It's somewhat air conditioned, but not enough. I was just dripping and nothing was working. So I got on one of the Facebook groups and I was like, um have I just forgotten how to do this or is it the weather? And they're like, Oh no, it's totally the weather. It's the That's heat why I asked heat. because <laughs> acrylic paint, um, acrylic paint is, is funny in that way that it's very sensitive to weather. Oh, I'm like so glad to hear you say that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and that's why I asked, cause I was like, because imagine like also Arizona, like every, if you yeah. drop acrylic paint in Arizona, it's like, it's dried, dry. <laughs> yeah. So over there, you certainly have to use mediums. Oh, yeah. Um, because, but in Washington, uh, when I used to live there, no, no, it takes all time. You can take your time there. Yeah. It's never hot. Yeah. So it's actually cold most of the year. So uh, it was, I didn't have air conditioning because we don't, most of houses don't in Washington it. don't have, they don't need it. Except for like two like days year. in a year. Yeah, that they decide to break the record and uh-huh. we almost died at home. It was bad, yeah. Yeah, I could not get to my studio because I was like, even if I get there, I know I'm going to, anything that I brush is going to like 
dry. It's not gonna, you know, although I use medium sometimes with um, uh, acrylic paint because I'm an oil person. I love oh, oil. Okay. And I keep wanting acrylics to be like oils, which is oh. sad. But why, how... why would you like to replace your oils with acrylics? No, but I put a little medium because, and I also use a lot of the golden, open golden, that it takes a little more time to dry because I just like to have that time. I'm so used to have that time of oils. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I want to extend the time a little bit. Mm -hmm. But how did you discover? Okay, when you decide, okay, I, I wanted to do this for relaxing or I want to try and why you end up liking fluid art? Well, years ago, I used to paint and I did oils and I did some watercolors, Ooh. but I had a lot more time back then. And so I could really agonize over every little detail and just get it just right. And I, uh, that I just, doesn't work with watercolor. Uh, <laughs> No, but you can just think about it and take, you know, it, yeah. you can take your time in a, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, oh, yeah, with also, oils, you can take a whole day. Yeah. Oh, yes. Or, or many days if you're doing yeah. some late. Yeah. So I had more time back then. And also I, working in marketing and working so hard with my brain, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I needed Absolutely. some kind of a release. And so yes. for me, trying to go back to a realistic style of painting or trying to make it look like a photograph, exactly. just, it was too much. It was too much pressure and I just didn't want to do it. So I, I was seeing fluid art on Instagram and I thought, like, I think I could do that. So I watched hours and hours of YouTube videos. Uh, I really love Rinska Dauna. Um, uh, Olga Solby is a good one. Kathleen Osmore. They're oh, yeah. just real good fluid artists. Yeah. Um, I love Kathleen and her no bra zone. <laughs> She's so cute. Um, so That's I just fun. started, yeah, I just started watching it. And if I saw a technique I liked or a color combination I liked, I would try mm -hmm. that. Um, and it, so I've been doing it for about oh, a year and nine months, I guess. I uh, started just before oh, wow. COVID hit and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. glad I had that. Um, Did yeah. it help you with, you know, relaxing your brain? Oh, so much, so much. It's one of those things for me anyway, where sometimes the weekend comes and mm -hmm. I don't really feel like painting, but I'm like, I, you need to do it. You're going to feel better once you do it. Yeah. <laughs> so once, you know, once I get into it, I don't want to stop. Yeah. That's true. Sometimes I feel that as well. Sometimes it's not that I don't want to paint, but I like, especially with, you know, I have a studio here, but it's small studio. And on my other house was also small. It's not like, wow, I have this studio. I have a little office room, right? Okay. That I made as a studio. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get lazy to just take the stuff out because you have to, I, I cannot have everything out, right? I have to organize things. And sometimes you have to set up the easel and all that, but you're right. Once you do it and you go through that phase, it's like when you go to the gym, like I don't want to yes. go, but once we're there, <laughs> yeah. I'm here. So, you know, yeah, uh, do it and enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, but I found, I find that there are some things if I have closed and open, I'm more willing to play with. Mm. You know, if I have some things like my, um, do you use the Liquitex inks that comes in a little bottle? I don't liquid? Oh, no. I need boy. to get some of those. Huh? I love them. So they, I have them on my cards because these cards, you know, the three level cards. They yes, are I have one of those. Mm -hmm. yes. And, and I have those there and I usually have all my watercolors, but my oils, they are more storage, you know, separate. So it's a little like, whole setup now and sometimes I don't know you but I did I do some I don't do poor but I do fluid art with alcohol winks and acrylics uh -huh. and I do have set up but because I don't I I use not to have a table and I still know because I bought another style so I would have to put all this plastic on the floor and I think I have some videos on my Instagram uh, <laughs> I have to put all these plastics on the floor I went to Home Depot and bought this plastic that people do when they're doing construction uh -huh. because on my other house I had carpet oh my goodness yeah so I was always uh -huh. freaking out 
Yeah, I can so see why. I had all this plastic on the floor and then I could sit down and do the things. But I felt like, you know, for me, I had back issues. I would have to take breaks because I cannot be on the floor for a long mm-hmm. time doing yeah. things. Um, but I agree with you. And it's just so relaxing. Yeah, but it is. I don't know if you agree. Do you agree that sometimes fluid art, it, it makes you give away the power sometimes. Absolutely. But I think for me, I think that's a good thing. I think I need to do that because I tend to really like to have control in other areas of my life. So I, I really think it's a bit of therapy for me to, to do this kind of art in particular. Yeah. And I also think, I don't know if you agree, but a fluid art for me is because people get very intimidated by abstract art. Don't you think? They think, mm-hmm. oh, this looks so hard or I don't know this, you know, because yeah. we always want a focal point or oh, right. a right. Or you want to start some. from something yeah. and abstract, you're starting from nothing. Yeah, exactly. And, but I think that if you have trouble just putting acrylic paint and paint abstract with a brush, I think fluid art is awesome because you can create abstract art easily just playing with it and boom you create something that's right Um, so what kind of materials do you use i know you do you use silicone or is that usually not for the sales no no usually it's more about um the weights of the paint right so the consistency of them being a little bit different there's also uh there's a paint i can almost never i almost never make a painting without this and it is um 24 karat gold by deco art. Mm. Oh, it yes. is slightly oily. So mm. there, I don't know what's in it. That's different from other paints. That. You not have right that. Not right not here. here. It, will be there soon. it will be there soon. Uh, but I that love one, it. Actually yes. deco art, deco art for a cheaper brand. They have very good paint. Yes. I like yeah. them. Their metallics are really nice. The gold, like I said, I can't live without. Um, but there's, all, there's another little trick. So mm. American Floetrol is what a lot of people in the U.S. use, but as a medium, um, mm-hmm. I use it. Uh, if I want to get a little gloss back in there, I'll use GAC 800. Oh, yes, I have that. Okay, so it makes a little bit more of a sheen when it's dry. Mm-hmm. The Floetrol tends to mat things out. Mm-hmm. Um, but Australian Floetrol is a favorite with fluid artists because it creates amazing cells and lacing. If you want to get that and you're in the U S you're going to pay tremendous amounts of money. So, um, what I do instead is I use the flow trawl and then a little bit of min wax pre-stain treatment Mm, and it's stinky. It's yeah, it's stinky and smelly and it's really sensitive to heat, which I learned this summer. So I have to keep it somewhere where it's cool. Um, but it, and it's, it's very similar apparently to the Australian flow trail. And where uh, did so you find that? Where did I find the, the, this, the min wax? Yeah. That's uh, I think it was Lowe's. So Lowe's oh. or Home Depot. It's just a little, like a little quart and you only need a few drops per, right. maybe one or two drops per ounce of paint with flow trail. Oh. Um, I think it makes a big difference makes more cells. I, I like the cells. Interesting because yeah, the silicone thing, I don't understand. And it never worked for me. Oh no. No. Oh, I don't I... know why. I don't know if the silicone that I have was not a good brand. It's not and funny. It should all be I the know. same. I, yeah. I have used it and it works really well for a swipe. Like if you're going to do an ocean swipe, oh, mm-hmm. really well for that. Um, it's funny, fluid artists are a little, are a little bit snobby about silicone, I find. <laughs> like like it's cheating if you use it. Um, I, I think the only legit reason not to use it is because you have to really clean it well before you seal it mm. or it makes interesting pits in the ceiling. So by what acrylic paint do you use? What brand? I use several brands. So I started out with strictly craft paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Totally mix them. I really like Amsterdam, but it's expensive for me for a hobby. Um, I, as a treat, I bought myself one tube of golden paint. (laughs) 
because <laughs> that's even more expensive. But the fluid, uh, fluid go there or the normal no. acrylic? No, the, the tube. The have tube you thing. tried? Have you tried the fluid golden fluid? Mm -mm. No. Do you like it? it yeah, is, it is good, but yes. it is expensive. Yeah, and also, if you want to try the little fluids, um, the gold one, I use also the gold. It's really good. Okay, it's really good. Yeah, but unfortunately, especially fluid, I mean, because if you think about it, the tube, it takes a while to finish for me. Yeah. But that fluid imagine. thing, when you start pouring. It's all gone. <laughs> all gone. Yeah. So, yeah. but I find that I have some specific colors on the fluid, um, you know, that are my core. Like I have a white and I have a gold and... Um, I have a turquoise mm -hmm. um, and magenta turquoise. and black because also the black, I like to put a little medium and put on the fine liner. Oh, so okay. marks and things. Yeah. Um, but I remember buying from American Crafts a set of fluid art kit. And oh boy, I saw that <laughs> it's, it's, it makes difference when you're not, you know, because they said that the paint is already fluid. You don't need to mix anything. Oh, yeah. But it doesn't work. Well, I was going to say fluid for what? There are so many different consistencies for different techniques. How no, do you... I thought it was thick. They said uh, you don't uh. need to mix anything. It was already fluid. Mm -hmm. But I think it was a little thick. It, uh, it didn't I'm give sure me right. the you know, the facts that I was expecting. So yeah. do you create them on canvases or do you do on paper? I do on canvas. Yeah, I, I used to, and I should probably go back to this when I was trying a new technique or a new mm -hmm. color combination, especially if it was a challenging one where you wanted some majorly contrasting colors, like a red and a green, right? That, that can be really tough with fluid art because it mm -hmm. so easily mixes, becomes mud. Um, so if I wanted to try something new like that, I would take a piece of watercolor paper and tape it down to some cardboard and, and try it on, on a piece of, um, watercolor paper. And yeah. the cool thing about that is I ended up with an awful lot of greeting cards, <laughs> right? Cause I would cut them to be the hey, size of a greeting card. I have so much paper left over from, and sometimes I actually, because, you know, I do mix media collages sometimes. So I... Yes. I, uh, I have deli paper on my table always when I'm painting. Oh, okay. And uh, I clean my brush in that deli paper and let mm -hmm. I use as collage. Oh, cool. Have you ever done anything with your skins? Like, so when the drips fall on the oh, paper? Oh, I heard, yeah, about that. I saw, I tried, but I didn't like. Didn't it was like. not my thing. Yeah. Okay. Because I thought, you know what? I could just put a heavy bar acrylic and give that same effect. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I didn't, I didn't like a lot. Have hey, you tried, yeah. have you tried alcohol inks? I have tried alcohol inks. I like it, but I don't think I'm very good at it. I think I've only come up with two, two that I like and hmm many, many, many more that I thought were terrible. So I've, I've taken a course. I've watched tons of videos and for whatever reason, it's just not sinking in. I don't get it. That is interesting because as a fluid artist, I think that is so intuitive. You would think um, so, <laughs> but I don't, I, 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 just I think alcohol ink. And by the way, something that is really sad, I'll take a moment to say this, but my moving people didn't let me bring my alcohol wings. Really? Yeah. So too flammable for the truck? I'm trying not to think about the money that I'm oh. going to have to spend to buy all my alcohol wings. Oh, it's too bad back. you couldn't ship it to yourself. Because it's flammable. Oh. And that made a hole in my heart. I'm sorry. Yes. And, my, and it's going to do a hole in my bank. Yes. Yes, it is. I'm but sorry. What I learned about alcohol ink is first of all I like to do more abstract I know some okay. people do beautiful work with flowers and things like that mm, I love that um but I also like to mix alcohol inks and acrylics 
How do you do that? Um, I use the Liquitex inks that they are more okay. fluid. And sometimes I use regular um, acrylic, but I got on a plastic cup and I put a lot of medium for them to be really loose. Another technique okay. is you put alcohol in acrylics and you, oh. you know, swirl a little bit. And what happens when, and that's the magic, you remembers me of granulation in uh, watercolor. When you buy good paints, they have granulation. And because when you put alcohol and you solve them in a acrylic paint and you solve them with alcohol, when you pour that on the paper, mm -hmm. it's going to granulate. It's going to disperse the acrylic ink and becomes that kind of effect and granulation. Huh. I don't even know how to explain, but it okay. is. Okay. Do you have one on your Instagram? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. So what's and your handle again? So I can look at it right it's now. It's Jana underscore two, not letter number two and words. And probably it's like uh, yes, old, yes, 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 yes. but um. Can't usually that. all my fluid art is with um alcohol and acrylic paint mm -hmm. and liquitex inks liquitex inks and there is another brand which is dera dera Lauren, something like this but it's another acrylic ink um that it's you know they are both the major um acrylic inks. basically is very pigmented acrylic ink in a very watery form that you can pick up by a dropper basically is that okay and what i like is that they are so pigmented so pigmented so pigmented and okay. you do you have a handle an instagram handle just for your art i don't because i discover your art for pinterest did you Oh, I, yeah, I want the I've idea pins and stuff. So funny. why are you not showing us your beautiful art? Oh, it is on my Instagram, but it's it just, is? yeah, it's combined with uh, pets and beach. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there haven't been any for two weeks because as we discussed, it's way too hot up there, but I may have to, I'm going to have to bring it downstairs again because I used to paint at my kitchen counter oh, and and I was worried because I knew I needed to replace the floors in there. I thought, what am I going to do? And then I was talking to a neighbor who had looked at my house before I bought it because she wanted to buy it. And she's like, why aren't you painting in that finished attic? I was like, oh my goodness, I can't. But why did I never think of that? I wasn't really using it and it's mm -hmm. beautiful. Uh, so now I paint up there, but I may have to come downstairs for the weekend. So what did you find about the community of fluid art? Did you find a community? Do you think uh, it's a helpful community? What did you find about it? Yeah, it, it's interesting. There are a couple that I'm in. There's a Shelly Art. Um, she Shelly Carruthers, she came up with this bloom method. Mm -hmm. um, and so I bought her course. I'm in her group. That's pretty good. Then there's uh, pour, scrape, and repeat. There's it's another fluid art. I like it, but I tend to lurk when I post yeah, things. Too. Yeah, I don't get any reaction online, and so I'm like, fine, I'm not going to post anything. I'm just going to learn from you guys. Uh, so if I have a question, like I did on Sunday night, I was like, somebody please tell me that my paint is not working because it's too hot, and I got responses. You know, and it's just it is nice to I think to have that support. Yeah. Yeah. Because I found that the fluid art is huge also. It's huge. Yes. It's a huge community. I mean, if you go to YouTube, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And on Pinterest, it's huge. And I've seen tons of Facebook groups. Yeah. Um, are, are there any that you like? Are you in any? No, on the top of my mind, no. Because okay. I left many of the groups because of this. I don't think there's a lot of interaction. Oh. It's, you know, but and I, I don't think they're doing the same fluid art that I'm doing. Oh, probably not. No, you're yeah. just pretty cool. So, um, but the good thing about this fluid art is that you can experiment. I started yeah. experiment. Okay. What if I pour this, but I put alcohol ink first. And by the way, backing up to the uh, alcohol ink a little bit, I yes. think the secret, if you want to do something similar to pour painting in a more fluid and abstract in alcohol ink. I think the secret using a lot of the alcohol medium 
and alcohol and pure alcohol. I was going to ask, do you buy the special medium or do you use alcohol? I have both because mm-hmm. I discovered that both have different reactions. Mm-hmm. Um, makes sense. I also use the medium from Jaguar. I have the range. Well, I had, I don't have any more of this. No. <laughs> yes, the Ranger, yes. the Jaguar, and I use alcohol. And I find that they have different effects on what I want to have. Yeah, I bet. But I I found through a lot of work and trials that at least for what I want to do is I have to put a large base, kind of like we're doing with the Dutch pour. You have to put that base. Mm-hmm. I figured that I have to put a lot of base of that medium first. Really? So right let, on the paper. Yeah. And let that in. I used to buy Yupo paper. Mm-hmm. And I buy, I have some Yupo paper, which is coming, hopefully. Yes. But Yupo paper is expensive. Yes. And I discovered something that it was magical. I, it's a photo paper from Costco. Because usually photo paper don't work with, and Tim Holtz says that all the time, photo paper doesn't work with alcohol. True. But this Costco photo paper, which is the weak, Costco brand is weak, weak, Weakland or something like that. I'll, I'll post in the notes. The Kirkland? Yeah, Kirkland. Yes, Kirkland. that's okay. correct. And mm-hmm. I don't have a Costco uh, membership. If you have, so you are in luck. Yes, but I'm pulling I buy up at, my Evernote I, so I can write down that. I buy at Amazon. I buy oh, at Amazon. Okay. And that paper works with alcohol ink. That is really good to know. And that is, it's yeah. so much cheaper. Yes. Because I okay. buy the RAM of like 50 and, you know, you pay 30 something bucks, which close to, you buy 10, pay, 10 pieces of Yupo for like 26. Right. Now. You know what I have done? And it works well for me because I pretty much hate everything I do in alcohol inks <laughs> is I buy a glazed tile, white ceramic glazed tile mm. from the hardware store. Mm-hmm. So if I don't like it, I just pour some more alcohol on it and wipe it right off. So is that cheap to buy oh, yeah. this. Yeah. Oh. Less than a dollar per tile. Oh, and then you can just reuse it as much as you want to, which is really good for testing. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So now and I got a tip and you got a tip. How? <laughs> yes. We- I'm loving it. Many tips today. <laughs> Very actionable podcast. And how is the smell of poor work? Like, do you have to take care, use a mask, or is that has any smell? Um, with acrylic paints, I don't notice an odor. Um, yeah, I do have. Usually, yeah, I, I do have. But a, I mean, the mediums, this this ones oh. that you are using by at the uh-huh. Home Depot. The the min wax. Um, the pre-stain treatment that I use mm-hmm. to make the flow trial work a little bit better, that does stink. So I tend to open it up, get what I need and close it up right away. Because once you get it in the flow trial, I don't notice it as much. It's probably still killing my brain cells, but um, I try to turn that that air purifier on. With alcohol inks, oh my goodness. No, I alcohol like inks, to- you have to have a respirator. I like to do that outside. Yeah, I use a respirator <laughs> do with you? alcohol That's inks, smart. yeah. Um, for a long time, because, you know, I've seen so many times people, it, it just ticks me off a little bit. And I did a whole episode about saying to people, don't put your hands on ink. Oh, like, it is. You should not. You should okay. use gloves. Um, because yeah. especially acrylics, acrylics are chemical. You know, you know, golden has one is of cancer because, you know, California requires them to mm. put that. Man, I'm and, glad you're telling me this. I still have paint left over that I can't, I haven't gotten off yet. <laughs> and and uh, with alcohol inks, I see so many people saying, oh, I want to play, but it gives me headache. I, said, I think, of course, <laughs> they give headache. It's like, it's a lot. And especially if you're annoying a ventilator. But even to me as a ventilator area, you are there you're going to smell that thing. Mm -hmm. So I use respirator and I have to tell you, I'm so used to it. Sometimes I forget it's on my face. Really? Yeah. You can use to it. And it's kind of like, 
you're doing one piece and it's going to take what maybe one hour it's not that big of a deal yeah. and or you can use this um masks that with COVID became very famous the one that oh. has a little respirator outside uh -huh. um oh. and sometimes i remember when they was like oh, no i think it doesn't have that because i was with the respirator and, you know I, I couldn't remember when i removed it i was like whoa okay yeah <laughs> it does stink yeah but it it makes me not have fear of putting a lot of alcohol, putting a lot of things because I'm not breathing them. Right. Um, but I do actually have later to open, you know, I op always open the windows when I'm working with it because the room oh. gets smelling yeah. like that. Right. And um, I think people let, you know, give up on alcohol because of that. They have reactions, which is perfectly normal. Um, but it all can be solved if you use a mask. Actually, we, we should not work with alcohol inks without a mask. Yeah. It's, it's dangerous. Yeah, right. It's the same thing for oil painters to work with Gamzo and not use a mask. Just because Gamzo doesn't have smell doesn't mean that it's having fumes. It's still having fumes. It's just not smelling. Mm, so it's, you know, you have to. I don't use Gamzo on my oil paints. I use natural mediums from... Um, with essential oils but um it's can you it's make them smell good they Maybe. smell like lavender oh, but sometimes i have wonderful. to say that i use mask because to me it's too much lavender wow. i'm very sensitive uh -huh. so um yeah but they smell like lavender that sounds yeah. nice and um another thing is alisa how is your setup because one thing that i have to confess when Fluid art became like really like it was a new thing. Right. They're set up to work because it drips. It's you have to kind of have something to like, because it is a mess. Mm -hmm. So did you <laughs> have now a routine for that? How is your setup? I am very messy. Uh, I mean, I get paint, like I have paint on my toenails right now that is not nail polished. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a mess. And I, I liked, I like to paint that way. Um, but fortunately for me, my attic studio is finished except the floor. The floor is plywood. So I got oh. this. It's not exactly a tarp. It is for paint, you know, for actually like wall painting. Um, it, but it feels more like a fabric and it's a blue color. So it actually looks kind of nice. So I put that on the floor and put my tables on top of it. And then I took plastic sheeting and put that on my tables. Um, and it, 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 it's a mess up there. <laughs> but can you reuse the plastic? Like, I know the paint's yeah. going to pour on the plastic and then yeah. do you, you just you have peel it off. You do, yeah. And then you can use again. Yeah. Oh, I haven't changed it. And I, I bet I, I probably moved up there last fall and I haven't had to. So there's still a lot of the, the plastic left on the end. I could pull it out and have fresh plastic, but I just peel it off. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I think, I, I think with fluid art, you have to have a good setup, right? It sure helps because yeah. if you are a person that's going to be ticked off by that, then it's not for you. And I think, don't you agree that having some space helps because I don't believe you can do a lot of that on a very tiny table, a very tiny space. What do you think? Find oh. a way, <laughs> but it is. It... Oh, your internet was cutting. Oh, okay. no. Okay. Let's okay. See. Okay. Now it's back. Oh, I'm not hearing you. I think it's because the internet was low and then the sound went off. Oh. No. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's hope it's going to continue. Okay. All right. So you asked if having... A space, a tiny like space, having, yeah. Oh, having a tiny space. I mean, I think if you want to do it, you'll make anything work if that's all you have. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, when I started and before I thought of the attic, well, I didn't think of it. Someone else did. I was doing it on the end of my kitchen counter, my my kitchen island. Mm -hmm. So it was a real small space. Oh, that's a good idea. It was probably like, 
I don't know, typical island width with maybe four four. And then you would deep. cover the island with plastic. Cover it with plastic. Wow. Um, I got paint everywhere. I still have some paint on my cabinets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, worth it. And now I just make a mess up in the attic. So what do you do with the beautiful canvas that you create? I have a hallway that is full of canvas that I've hung up. I have more up in the studio attic. There's one I really want to hang. It's it's the swipe. It's silver, um, silver on background with black and copper. It's just, I love looking at it, but I don't have anywhere to put it right now. Uh. So I hang them around my house. I've given a few away. I've sold a few. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, my problem with canvas, and I'm actually thinking in... Um to work with loose canvases instead of stretched canvases. Oh, really? Because it's space. It's just, you know, my, stu my studio here is not that big for me to start storaging all these kinds of canvas. And I think also it's easier to send to collectors. You know, I mm -hmm. could put on a tube and it's easier. Yes. I, you know, when I went to Brazil and I bought art, that's, that's the way I bought it. I bought them loose canvases really? and I, okay. yeah from artists and over here I frame them because they are big big pieces and I think for them it's easier to sell like this for especially for tourists yeah um because how a tourist is gonna you know take a big big frame like more than 50 inches you know mm. tall in an airplane it there is no no way Right. So, um, and I'm thinking that um, for a storage space and to work more on paper. Okay. Also for that reason, easier to mm -hmm. ship to people, uh, decreases, you know, the price makes for more affordable also to yeah. give that range. I like to give that range for people to be able to idea. afford. Um, but yeah. canvases has been a, a trouble. I remember when mm -hmm. I was moving, I gave a lot of things and sold some things and I sold like I had a package that I didn't even open it was like 10 canvases of 20 by 20 that I got on Hobby Lobby and that went right away. Um, it's just a lot of space. Yeah, it is. I'm fortunate that I do have a lot of space, but sometimes I wish I could look at some of those that I'm not, that I no, have, I mean, you know. I, I love to hang my art everywhere. When my art is coming, my house is gonna be full of it. I have it will no be your home, to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I have art from other artists as well, but I just believe that it brings so much joy. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking yesterday about color. Don't you think that some colors, you know, move with your mood? Yes. Like some yes. colors, especially when I'm doing washes of watercolor, I just feel the color makes an impact on my soul. Yeah, and you can tell that the listeners can't what color i love yeah. <laughs> it's all turquoise and turquoise. Blues. i love yeah. turquoise as well i yeah. love 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 yeah. you did a piece i i don't know the name but i saw your idea pin it was just so beautiful it had this dark blues with turquoise and then this white but it's it splashes from one end to the other i don't know if you know what i'm talking about was that about. the one with the balloon and it had so many cells but like veins and Ah, oh, he was just so oh. beautiful. Thank you. Is like, it this one by any chance? Uh, no. Not that no. one. But I was like, wow, you must feel like... That one? Yeah. That you one, must, okay. You must feel like, wow, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do. And I'm like, how did sometimes, I do that? Sometimes you're like okay, I got it what I was thinking. Because sometimes it doesn't work, right? We yes. think something and then it's like, um, it's, but I love how you're doing actually a lot of videos of your process. Yes. And well, how was that for you? Did you have to learn how to, um, would you use it just your cell phone to, yeah. to do the? Uh -huh. I just do a time lapse on my cell phone with a little phone holder on the table and I don't, I mean, they're not studio quality videos by any means, but I was doing it for myself originally so that I could oh. see, all right, what impact does it have oh. when I do this thing? And so I could really analyze, 
especially with a Dutch pour. Yeah. Uh I wanted to learn, like, if I got a good result, how did I do that? So especially with a Dutch pour, when you're using a hairdryer, I want to see exactly where is it hitting where Mm -hmm. I like the effect. Uh, So I was going back and looking at them anyway. I started sharing them on Instagram first and people would be like, oh, I love watching these. So when idea pins came out, I thought, oh, I have all this content that I can share. I love it. And I saw that you had, you know, a a lot of comments, because I mean, Pinterest is not well known for comments, right? Say the truth, but your idea pins are really getting comments. Yes. That is wonderful because that is so difficult on Pinterest. Yes. Yeah. And, And what's really fun for me is when I tag the manufacturer, like, um, the pigment manufacturer, I use my spring pigments. Um, I use Arteza paint sometimes and I will tag Mm -hmm. anybody (laughs) whose products I used. And well, I wanted to see if they'd respond. My spring always responds. And I want to say it was Arteza. Is that powder pigment? So is that a brand of paint? It's a powder pigment. pigment. Yeah. Oh, what's the name again? My spring. I think it's M E Y spring. It's, I don't know that it's a super well-known brand, but they, they respond to me and I like it because it just adds more shimmer, which, you know, the more shimmer, the better, as far as I'm oh, concerned. Oh yeah, I love shimmer. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So that's fun to see those comments. And then sometimes people will ask questions and it's really turned me around on idea pins for Pinterest because I, I was not mm. a fan originally. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't like that. They don't let you link anything. I know. But anyway, talking about that, I got to know you a long time because I got Tailwind because of you. You used to work (laughs) at Tailwind Mm -hmm. and um, I discovered Tailwind, how it could help us and so on. And I've been listening to you on your lives a long time, educating us. And um, and I love that you started now a YouTube channel and the YouTube channel is your name, right? Yes. And, and I made a bitly link for it. Um, it's, it's bit.ly slash Alisa's show. Yeah. But I'll, I will link everything on the, on the okay. notes and on the Thank blog you. post, but I, I know Pinterest for artists, like you put some, any kind of art there and you're going to see trillion results. It can be sometimes overwhelming. Yeah, but do you have any tips as a marketer of Pinterest? How do you think Pinterest could work for artists to really, I would not say sell, but to attract people? Because I try not to use Pinterest to sell. I try to attract on Pinterest. What I want from Pinterest is just for people to get to know me, get to visit my blog, get to maybe yeah. visit my Instagram from my blog and things like that. Interesting. Uh, so you said sometimes when you do it, it's overwhelming. So tell me, what are you doing that's getting these results that are almost too much? Um, to tell the truth, I just actually record a podcast. It's not, um, it's going to be live when this one goes, mm-hmm. but how in the name of the episode, I can say, because, you know, we're going to be after that one. Okay. It's, how to get inspiration outside social media. And that is including Pinterest. And what I talked about Pinterest in that case, I use Pinterest for um, research. I don't use Pinterest for inspiration. Okay. Because I think sometimes when you search something, for example, if I go right now and put Dutch poor, because I never heard about this and you got me excited. Let me look about Dutch poor fluid, right? I'm sure I'm going to see so many good art and so many things, right? Mm -hmm. And then what can get you, in that case that I was talking on the podcast, it can get you down if you let you influence by that. Oh, You can think, well, why am I going to pin my stuff here? There is already this. Or my art is not maybe beautiful like these people, right? Instead, looking at Pinterest in another way, which I'm going to do another episode, which is documenting. Use Pinterest as a documentation of things you like and things you dislike, but not as inspiration. Okay, I want to paint today. I'm going to use Pinterest as my inspiration. No, I don't think you should do that because first of all, you can be copying something or be influenced by something from other people. Mm -hmm. 
but instead see Pinterest as another kind of resource for you. You know what I mean? So, okay. uh, but I, I told you before we started recording that I believe solely on Pinterest because on my previous business, it brought so much traffic to my site. Yeah. But Pinterest is, is a marathon. Yes, right? yes. And Pinterest has changed. Mm, so, yes, a lot. Yeah, so what you did with your previous business probably wouldn't give you the same results today. No, it changed completely. At that time, oh my gosh, we didn't have many other things Pinterest has today. <laughs> I know, and we could no. just pin the same thing over and over again. And every time we pin it, we get more and more. It's just... Yeah, they've at changed. At that time, also, I be. could barely pin my stuff. I had to pin more pe other people's stuff, right? It was very different. Very <laughs> yes, different. Yes, very different indeed. I think I, I like the changes. I think Pinterest is seeing what's happening with other companies and trying to, okay, maybe I have people say, well, it's imitating. I don't, I don't see it that way because, first of all, nothing is unique anymore. Mm, and, true. and, I think what Pinterest is saying, like, look, maybe people, especially for, for us as artists as well, maybe people want to see a video of that person instead of just a picture there with a nice pin graphic, maybe they want to see Alisa pouring the thing yeah, and doing it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and I think it probably also has a lot to do with the changing demographic on Pinterest oh. with the Gen Z growing so enormously last year. Like, what does Gen Z want? They want TikTok, right? They want entertainment connection. So I, I think it was a smart move. I, I know a lot of creators are I think resistant. it's becoming more active, like active, yeah. not in the sense of having more people. No, active in the sense of it's not the boring thing that you do screw through pins. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like it comes a video and then comes a pin and then comes this and then comes that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's becoming more... I don't know, active is the only word that I can think about, but it's, it's, it's not boring anymore. Yeah, it's dynamic, it's exciting, yeah. Because before, at, you know, many years ago when I was doing my Photoshop stuff, uh, we barely log in at Pinterest. We could just be on Tailwind and not even see Pinterest anymore. And mm -hmm. I kind of see myself not going to be, especially because I, not related to art, but, you know, I just moved, I bought a house and I go there and search ideas for pool decoration uh, yes hanging is. towels you know how to hand no hang, towels pool towel storage so i'm thinking yeah. about how i'm gonna put <laughs> my towels outside um you know living room decor because mm -hmm. i have a bear i have a sofa but i don't have anything else i want to get how can i decorate my living room you know yes. So, and I get so much inspiration of that, but actually I started seeing things that I didn't say, yeah, you know, before was that now, okay, now you see a person making up a room, a living room, and now yeah. you see a video of, a, now you see an app that I didn't know that there's an apps for decoration. Now, mm -hmm. I discovered all that through Pinterest. Wonderful. Yeah. And, and before it was just basically blog posts, right? Mm -hmm. Basically blog posts. And, and that's not how it is today. Right. I agree. I think there's a space for all of those different kinds of content. Um, do you think artists today can do something different to stand out in Pinterest? I mean, I, I don't want to like toot my own horn, mm -hmm. but I will say that I don't see a ton of idea pins related to with, art. Yeah. Like, yeah, what you exactly. I see a lot. There are a lot of videos, um, here, here are a couple of idea pins, but they're only one panel and it doesn't seem to be a video. So I think that there's, there's room in there for artists to well, I got a lot of likes and tracking on idea pins that I did of me painting a canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. But in the no, beginning, surprised. I have to confess, I was afraid to do that because, you know, everybody that talks about Pinterest says, oh, idea pins, you have to teach something like you have to have one slide and choose because Pinterest asks you that by right? next 
put something like third step. Uh, yeah. And because my video was just one video, I was afraid if Pinterest would say like, no, this is not what we want. We want like one slide, second slide, kind of a carousel in Instagram. But it actually, is kind of a carousel. Yeah. So, but actually I was like surprised when I saw all these impressions and likes and I was like, oh, yep. okay. I was not penalized. <laughs> no, no. And there are things you could do, right? So I, one of the ones I did recently, second to the last one, the last one I did was a fail. And I thought, I wonder if people are going to want to see this fail. I suspected not. Um, oh no, that have people love to see fails. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has not gotten much activity. Really? Really. So my other ones that actually worked have a lot um, better. So oh. what I'll do is I'll do like the first frame will be that time lapse video. And mm-hmm. then the next one will be like a close up of the painting, maybe a mm-hmm. couple of close ups in a row. And then I might do a video of myself talking about mm-hmm. the technique. And then I'll do one that's a photograph of all the supplies I used. So you can make multiple pages out of ah, that. That's a great idea. That's a great idea yeah. to put the final uh, piece there. And, and, and then you create that kind of carousel. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's what idea pins are supposed to have everything you'd ever need to do the thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's what I'm trying to do. Cause I think they can be frustrating for users if it's just an idea pin and then there's no, like, there's no link. Right. So, well, how am I supposed to follow up? So yeah. you have to really feed it to people inside of the idea pin to make it something that's satisfying to people. Yeah. And I put a, I made a reel for Instagram and I put on, on Pinterest mm. and I say to people, you know, if you want to see the longer version, just go to my YouTube um, okay. because I'm going to build up now my YouTube channel and um and because I think people don't want to see long videos on Pinterest. They are not there. If they want to do that, they go to YouTube. Yes. Or they agree. go to Facebook. They are not there to waste 30 minutes watching you paint. It's, it's just not the place for it. But right. I think they're like, and me also, when I see this, I say, huh, that is interesting. How do I find out more about this, this person and this art? Yeah. I want to see longer videos of that. And then go and follow the person. So I, are you linking to your YouTube channel from your Pinterest profile? Not profile, but I wrote okay. on the idea pin. Well, my profile has my website, which has everything. I'm verified, okay. but um, I wrote on the idea pin um, there. The only grunge that I have with Pinterest right now is because they have this merchant thing that you can connect to products and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it works really great if you have a Shopify, but I yes. have a Squarespace commerce website. And I found actually a blog that taught how to do that. And after five seconds, I was like, there's no way I'm going to do all that. It involves codes and <laughs> yes. all kinds of things oh, yeah. and back and forth, back and forth. And I was like, there's no way. So I am verified. People can go to my website there. Mm-hmm would like to put direct products there but unfortunately it seems that everybody thinks that and and Pinterest is not the only one there are several things that just work with Shopify and I wish people would think that not everybody just have Shopify I know it's a big one though if I you know if I was using Square I'd be messaging them when are you going to do a Pinterest integration (laughs) Yeah, it's yeah. a big one. I agree. I when I had my digital stuff, I had a Shopify. It works great. I just because my website is Squarespace, I wanted to do my store with Squarespace because it made sure. more sense. Mm-hmm. So and I love Squarespace. I love. I used to have a WordPress, and so glad I don't have that anymore. Um, it's everything is just easy and fluid and beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to have to deal with plugins anymore. And my site being slow. Oh, my and, site is so And I slow. think for, yeah. for artists, uh, Squarespace works wonderfully. They are made for artists. They are very visual. Oh, okay. And um, I like it. I just, my grunge is that Pinterest is just works with Shopify for now. I mean, it can be done. <laughs> yes. If you can. have the brain for it. Yeah. I and- don't have the brain for it. That was something that I did bring to the attention of our 
partner team over there. Like it's really not easy. And the one tip I got from that meeting was it's just like a Google shopping feed. So I like, I don't know how exact it is, but I thought if you have a Google shop feed, I would try that over on Pinterest and see what happens. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> You're not <But> sold. <laughs> as, as a last tip, what tip would you give to artists if they want to go in the bandwagon of Pinterest, if they are not yet? Yeah, um, I think, think about what you want. So what do you want people to do, right? Like you want people to go to your YouTube account. Mm -hmm. um, it might be worth adding a link in your bio, like a bit.ly link. So people mm -hmm. could go right there. Um, do you want people to go to your Instagram? Like put that in, in your idea pin and idea pins really are going to give you the, the first results and probably the most satisfying results. Um, so encourage people to follow you on Instagram. And I do, like you mentioned that progression from Pinterest to Instagram, it makes total sense because on Pinterest that people are coming to discover, yeah. right. That's really great for awareness. And Instagram is really great for that. No, like, and trust. So idea pins bridge that a little bit in that you can show your face, you can use your voice. Like people really do want to get to know you that way. Mm -hmm. Um, but also send them over to Instagram. So you're hitting them from both angles. But do the idea idea pins. Yes. And thank you for doing that YouTube uh, video about Pinterest ads, because oh, as right. I wrote in the comment, it's such a secret thing. Like people <laughs> talk about it, but nobody actually shows. And I was like, I want to learn how to do it. But no, you see no videos like on YouTube about that. Huh. If you put ads, you're going to see videos of people talking about it, but it's not actually showing how to do it. Yeah. And there's tons of people teaching Facebook ads and how to do and going right. in the manager, but nobody does that with Pinterest. And yeah. thank you for doing that. Oh, you're uh, welcome. It's very useful. And if people want to start with fluid art, mm. if they don't know anything and they want to get a starting play, what is your suggestion to get started if they want to start today? Oh, YouTube. I mean... <laughs> YouTube, YouTube uh, just, University, YouTube University, look for acrylic fluid art and, and find the styles that you like. I, I tend to gravitate towards just a few artists, but there might be different ones that you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what the, um, you think would be the initial, uh, tools that they would start with. So acrylic paint, yeah. acrylic paint, you can do it with water. I think you'll probably have more fun. If you buy some flow trawl, you can buy that in a mm -hmm. gallon jug from Lowe's or Amazon mm -hmm. for pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. um, some canvas, get the cheap ones and know that if you don't like it, you can scrape it off and rinse it off and start all over again. It's mm -hmm. no big deal. Um, yeah, some cups. I like to buy those little baby food containers to store paints oh, after I've mixed nice. them up. Yeah. yeah. I buy um, a dairy-free yogurt at Target from the Yopla or Yopla. Uh -huh. I don't know. It's a French Oh, name. yeah, yeah. And they come with glass because I try to buy them not to have more plastic. And yes. I save that a ton for mixing things. So smart. Yeah. 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 So yeah, you don't need a whole lot really to get started. And I think also with the cups is that even if you get that with acrylic paint, later you can actually scrape them and yeah. you can reuse can them different them than plastic that they become so thick and then suddenly you have to uh, throw them away. Yeah. And um, yeah, but that was great. That's great. I hope. Uh, so how people can find you, tell them your Instagram. I'm going to put all the links, but just okay. tell them. Yeah. It's Alisa M Meredith. So A-L-I-S-A-M-M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H. On Instagram. And you have also profile on Pinterest. Same right? username. Yep. Yeah. And I'm sure if they go to your Instagram, they can link there and they can find your in the profile. Everything. absolutely yep yes. has all my links uh yeah i would love to to see what other people are doing so you can dm me i love it yeah alisa thank you so much i thank you uh, i'm so happy that i talked to you today me it's, too i enjoyed it a, a lot it's a circle for me to Aww. like circle coming back for me to be talking with you because you have no idea how you helped me so much oh thank um, you that means a lot to me and, and thank you for the tips about um alcohol ink and acrylic paints 
And now I'm, it's yeah, going to be yeah. hard to get anything and done for the listen, rest of the day. <laughs> I'm, I'm on Instagram. You can DM me there. Let's I, I will can help you while we can continue talking about this. And maybe when my stuff come here, I can show you. Um, <gasps> oh, I will take yes, you up on that. Yes. Thank you. I, I love to, I actually do Zoom sometimes with a friend that we do our journals together for the Zoom. And nice. uh, it's fun. So I'm here to help if you need any help. Oh, and I do. Yeah, I love to show <laughs> tools. <laughs> I do. I, love, I need help. <laughs> I love to show tools. So I appreciate so much. You are just, you know, I always felt that you're such a wonderful person and mm. you're so you. right away accepted. And I'm so grateful. And I want to put all the links, everyone. And I would encourage you to go see Alyssa's art because it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. You. you should put more on that on Instagram. Put more. I know. I know. I know animals and beach is fun and trees and all that. But, but you know, and this is a whole other subject that maybe you've covered before, but sometimes I feel like because it's fluid art, it's a little bit cheating, right? I it's, I don't think so. it's not like yours where you have to actually make it look like something. No, but you know, <laughs> no, I, I don't agree. It, okay. For the person that try fluid art. No, I don't agree. It, <laughs> it has, it has, it has some difficulty. And, and I think also it's what you have very important that people that you feel that what I think is awesome that teaches you letting it go mm-hmm. and be gentle with yourself and appreciate what the art brings to you. Because I think fluid art and alcohol ink. And sometimes I'm like, let's see what you're going to give me today. Because sometimes you have no control. Yes, you're right. right? Sometimes I use my blower um you know the i use an electric blower the ones that people use for uh air paint oh okay yeah like an yes. airbrush yeah. yeah airbrush and sometimes i brush and it goes totally the other way that i thought and and that teaches you to give you a lot of a little bit of grace yeah hey right. okay that happened that i didn't want it to happen so <laughs> what i can do now let's right. let's try go another way so you know, I, I believe it's not cheating at all. It's, it's, and it's an art and it's an art and it's beautiful art. So I especially love the videos. Keep doing them. Okay. I will. Um, I will think maybe, next time. maybe, I don't know, maybe you would do another YouTube channel doing them longer. I don't know. Just putting out there. Who knows? You okay. know, I mean... who knows? Because sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's 10 seconds. It's like 15 seconds. So fast. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but who knows? You could document your experiments and and especially because you use a technique that I think many people are not familiar. I was not familiar with this technique. Okay. And it would be fun to see a little bit more of that. Check it out. If you if you make one, make sure you send it to me so I don't miss it. Please. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Well, Alicia, thank you. And everybody, you can check all the links and all information as always on the podcast notes. And as always, if you check my blog, I have for every episode, I have everything there. Also, if people prefer to read instead of, you know, listening, I have all the main points of the podcast over there. So you can check it out. And Alicia, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week. And thank you so much thank for you. being here on the podcast. Thank you.